The McElroy brothers are not experts, and their advice should never be followed. Travis insists he's a sexpert, but if there's a degree on his wall, I haven't seen it. Also, this show isn't for kids, which I mention only so the babies out there will know how cool they are for listening. What's up, you cool baby? It's familiar, but not too familiar, but not too familiar. Hail to the chief, he's the chief and he needs hailing. That's of course a classic scene from the hit film My Fellow Americans, starring Jack Lemmon and Walter Matthau, both as President John F. Two Kennedy. angry presidents. Two angry presidents. <laughs> Grumpy old presidents. Grumpy old statesmen. Uh, one of the classics of their later years, uh, My Fellow Americans. Uh, but but today we're celebrating President's Day, of course, here at My Brother, My Brother and Me, an advice show for the modern era. I'm your oldest president, Justin McElroy. I'm your middlest president, Travis McElroy. Guys, President Obama is a space monster from the planet Muslim, and <laughs> I don't know. I don't understand why he gets his own holiday now, when he's trying to, to kill be, my freedom. Oh, hold my on, freedom. real quick. Before we get emails on this, I just remembered Walter Mouth that was not in My Fellow Americans. It was James Garner. <laughs> and, and before we get other emails about this, Griffin is Griffin McElroy. <laughs> he but my position about- on President Obama's space monster ship stands. I know, but firm. you definitely want to put a signature at the end of that bomb bomb. <laughs> that the people know who that voice is attached to. How come no matter how many times we ask him, he can't produce a birth certificate showing that he's not from outer space? Yeah. yeah. Have you guys ever noticed that? Let us see your Earth bud. Um, so I have a question for you guys. and uh, My dear friend Jeremy Dubin uh, asked me this, and it kind of started... So, here's the situation. Okay. You're about to get into a bar fight, right? Okay. Just a big old brawl. Okay. You can have three presidents backing you up. Okay. Which three do you choose? Uh, well, I think we can all agree that James Buchanan's right out. He died of the flu, right? Yep. Yeah. Agreed. No Buchanan. Uh, Is that the one that gave the two-long speech and he died from it? Yeah, yep. I think. I mean, yeah, if you punch that guy outside... He's done. He's dead. I think we can all agree that first and foremost is Andrew Jackson. No, that no, that's ridiculous. Andrew Jackson has killed a man. The, and Andrew so, Jackson is a crazy person. Yeah, you yeah. gotta have you gotta have Andy J uh, backing uh, you up. Can I drop Polk on you guys? He's see, so, I said Polk. He's so thick, so hardy. Like I said, Polk knock, too. Can't knock him over. Yeah, you um, know, you, I mean, uh, another another I think solid choice would be would be Taft. Because you just mm. keep pounding it, and where are his vital organs? I don't know. And he can do that big belly bounce thing where yeah. it like knocks someone across the room. He does, and he does a thousand hand slap. Which is really <laughs> <impressive>. <laughs> Wait, I think you're thinking of Zangief. I am thinking of E Honda, of course. <laughs> that is um, James K. Polk can do yoga fire though. Yoga yeah. fire. Uh, Obviously, uh, there's Teddy Roosevelt. Teddy Roosevelt, though, that's so odd. He's probably busy in somebody else's fantasy ballroom <laughs> fight. You're not gonna be able to get. You're not gonna be able to get Teddy. He's gonna be busy. And what about Franklin? Franklin is good get for FDR. Jeffrey. Who's gonna go after him? If it's last man standing, he has got a distinct advantage or disadvantage, depending on how strict the rules are. <laughs> Can I say Jeb Bartlett? Okay. Yeah. Why not? It's your. Not. It's your... Uh, it's... His illness, I don't know, may not make him the fiercest competitor. Nah, I would <laughs> put him in there. He's never been in a, a military man, as folks on that show are want to point out. Gerald Ford uh, turned down offers to play in the NFL. Maybe, maybe mm-hmm. that he would be a good quarterback for your punch team. What about uh, Bill Clinton? Fucker's charming. He's so charming. Hey, he we don't need to do this. Mm-hmm. Hey, let's all relax over Nazima. Mm-hmm. That's my uh, impression. Of Bill Clinton. I'm no, actually, actually good. statistically speaking, a lot of people don't know this. I'm actually the only person on uh, Earth who impersonates Bill Clinton. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so that is the actually first Bill Clinton impression that a lot of people You really captured his Zima presidency Here's the thing. so well. The thing is, you got to talk like this. And, yeah. and, uh, and That's um, it. My Step fellow, one. My talk fellow, like Bill Clinton. My fellow, maybe, a, <laughs> uh, maybe a fellatio goof. <laughs> uh, my fellow Americans. Low jobs. <laughs> is that good? Is that a good impression? 
That's do I am I capturing his? I'm capturing his irreverence, <laughs> certainly. Mm-hmm. I, I, hey, let's. As much as I love, love talking about which presidents could take a punch, we should probably help some people out with advice. This first question comes to us from Formspring. I got a girl's number from a night out a few weeks ago, but after a few texts, nothing came from it. What's the protocol for the number? Do I delete it, forget it ever happened, or do I leave it and live in constant fear of accidentally dialing it? <laughs> oh, man. Um, Guys, is, is Formspring like Pinterest? I do what? not know Pinterest. Is that a is that a social social networking thing? It's like it's like Skype, but with push pins. From what I understand, I mm-hmm. actually have reached my limit on any joining any sort of social networks, and I think this is how you become an old person. In that, I used to think it was so dismissive. You know, you would try to teach an old person something new, and they say, "Ugh, I'm not going to learn that." And I'm just like, hey, we're being cranky. What you discover as you get a little older, there's a great sense of power to say, like, hey, I'm not putting that in my life. Get out of here. I'm not putting Buzz, buzz off. Buzz off. (laughs) Keep it. Tweeter, tweet toe. Tweet off. Tweet out of here. (laughs) Uh, Pinterest. You are going to call that number. You will call the number, and it will not be accidental. It will be drunk. Maybe not today. Maybe not tomorrow. It'll maybe be a year from now when you're real sad and lonely on Valentine's Day. Tell and you just call me. her at night and you go, hey, hey, Deborah. Hey, we Deborah. haven't spoken in about a year. I thought we had something special together. Oh, man, the whole episode, huh? <laughs> this is former President Bill Clinton. I'm a ghost now. Now I'm a ghost who loves the secret to Bill Clinton. <laughs> I love blowjobs, balanced budgets, and hauntings. Griffin, mean, yours sounds more like Don Knotts. You got it. The secret to Will Clinton is you got to sound like a ghost underneath a bunch of blankets. <laughs> that, that's the secret. I love Bill Clinton. <laughs> <laughs> and if you throw a little Undertaker in there, <laughs> oh, yes. It's me, former President Bill Clinton. Blowjobs. Um... <laughs> I don't understand why you why you need this number. You know what I mean? I like to keep my contact list real tight. Real tight. Um, I very recently uh, deleted the Gino's Pizza phone number <laughs> from Huntington, where I don't live anymore. Um, but I used to, I needed that quick access so I could call them up, get a pizza ready in 10 minutes, grab it, and chomp. But now I don't need that number anymore. You have even less utility for the number you have. Um, yeah, you're, well, what you're if he does gonna, need it someday? It's good to let go. You know what? She rejected you. This is your chance. This is your only chance to reject her. Say, okay, I don't need you in my life either. Close the door on her. I mean, it, to, who cares if they're uh, are already they're already closed? But you know, you can close it on your side, like a hotel room. <laughs> <laughs> Two doors. You close your door. Doesn't matter if the other one's closed. You'll never think about it again because, as far as you can remember, you deleted her number. And that's mm-hmm. what you'll tell your grandkids. Or, or you taught me to tone her, and you write it on a bathroom wall. Oh, uh, don't do no, that. don't do that. Again, you put will it be on, tempted, though. Put it on Pinterest. Put it on Pinterest. <laughs> no one knows what that is. <laughs> it should be safe there. <laughs> <laughs> no one will find it and, and delete it. Um, but, yeah, you, you don't want to hold on to that. Yeah, delete it. Get rid of it. Uh, w- while working at Subway one day with my boyfriend, a customer came up, and their fly was down. We were both wondering, what is the proper etiquette of notifying someone of this? Since they are a paying customer, we don't want to embarrass them and and lose their business. But we also don't want them walking around being embarrassed that their zipper is down. What do we do? That's from a sweet sandwich artist. Oh, man. Okay. My my feeling on this has always gone, like, same thing with food in the teeth, right? If, if I, uh, my rationale is, if I uh, don't tell them, then they're just going to walk around like a goof all day. They'll want to know it's there. But then as I got older, it dawned on me, if no one tells them, they'll just think no one noticed. Here's the thing, though, because here's what I do. If I, like, if I've been walking all day with my, with my zipper down, I get home and realize it. I do a mental checklist back through the day of all the people I had contact with and think, <laughs> why didn't they tell me? Why didn't they tell me? 
It's Why like didn't a, any of these people tell me? It's like drawing up a containment net in like a viral outbreak. You're like, oh man, I was at the grocery store, so they all saw it, told all their <laughs> friends. Yeah, and then I incredible arousal is the only thing, like a blinding arousal. <laughs> <laughs> Diving <laughs> into a sun of arousal. <laughs> Just burning your skin off. <laughs> With the heat of the passion of your self exposure to the neighborhood women. <laughs> I think my favorite thing about the like the fear of being embarrassed about having your zipper down is unless your junk is actually like hanging out, nothing happened. Like the only thing you're embarrassed about is that a zipper was undone on your pants. Like there was no other consequence to it. Are you saying but Charles that doesn't make any sense because then we could just walk around zipper free. If that was the mm-hmm. case, we just all have Big gaps down there, big, big shitty pockets. No, so I'm not si- saying you shouldn't do the zipper, but I'm just saying like that horrified feeling you get when you realize that your zipper's been down for like four hours. Isn't like, as what? bad as the feeling is realizing that you've been hanging, hanging, <laughs> hanging some, brain, hanging brain. <laughs> well, yeah, I would say that having your junk actually hanging out of your pants is a lot worse than you're just having your zipper down. That telling somebody to examine the, their zipper is like a warning. That they are just a step away yeah, from... Yeah, you, you are walking a, a razor's edge, my friend. Yeah. Uh, but, is I mean, but... Try, oh, man. Sometimes you say things, and I don't know if they make sense or not. And it's it's hard trying to decode it. Like, I, I'm just saying it could totally be casual. Just like, hey, your zipper's down. They'd be like, oh, thanks, cool. But you can't be casual, like, Travis, because in that sentence, what you aren't saying at the beginning is, hey, I was just looking at your dick, and I noticed... Now that's true. <laughs> I was giving you how about I was giving you a, a head to toe check. Yeah. To I see what it. various articles of clothing you'd forgotten to finish. Maybe you can wait a minute. Maybe you can trigger some synapse in their brain that makes them check their crotch mm. while Oh, you're like in, that's a great belt. Like in the transaction, right? Like say, um, did you want did you want some extra salami? Mm. On ah. your sandwich. Did you want that foot long or six inches? Did you want a sandwich? Because I can already see you've got a hot dog. That's Did, the worst thing. That, that was the worst. That was just because of his wiener. Right. Oh, right. Okay. okay, great. Did you. Is it just as embarrassing if a woman has her zipper down? No, I don't think it's just. I don't. Is it? I you know the difference? What? Women would check. <laughs> Cuz women aren't like men that just stumble out of the bathroom and hope everything's okay in there. <laughs> like <laughs> just blindly <laughs> clawing their way out of the room. <laughs> That's how we get through life. Unless there are women around. <laughs> I barely made it. Anytime a man le- is in a bathroom, it looks like uh, Jekyll turning into Hyde. <laughs> Scraping at the walls and praying, just looking for a uh, way out. I am every time I go to the bathroom, I'm basically just racing, right? Like I'm racing <laughs> against my ghost from the last lap. <laughs> I'm trying to beat, trying to beat my time. And, I know, and to I that effect, like I will just walk out of the bathroom with my pants around my ankles, <laughs> and then hit the stopwatch. <laughs> hit it, go, yes, ah, did it. Shaved off a few precious hundreds. <laughs> Do you? Uh, this is. I, I, I guarantee you that every man has done this, and I. Doubt, I hope and pray that no woman has. Um, do you guys ever, in the middle of your bathroom ritual, you know there's something else you need to do, but God damn it, you're done in there. You're, uh-huh. just, you're just done with it. And that whatever that thing is, it's just going to have to, it's just going to have to wait. Whatever, whatever thing, whatever part of your ritual you did not do that morning, it's just going to be because you don't want to spend any more time in there. Mm-hmm. Usually for me, it's that someone else has just like walked into the bathroom. Usually, someone I don't trust. <laughs> <laughs> what are you? What bathrooms are you in? You know, this competitive bathrooms. <laughs> <laughs> Is this a player versus player bathroom? Or a- are you uh, trying to take my secrets or <laughs> cooperative bathroom? Or do we get cubbies? Uh, Griffin, how about a Yahoo? Um, sure. Um, this one was sent in by The Real Neil Orr. Thank you, The Real Neil Orr. It's by Yahoo Answers user LOL, who asks, Do I have a right to do this? I'm paranoid, and I needed to ask this. If someone is trying to see my imagination, or hear my thoughts, or sense my emotions, 
do I have a right to make a back off face to them to make them get out of my head? I know some people who try to read me and I want to stop it. <laughs> oh my god. Oh Jesus. They're pr- they're afraid they're getting mentalisted. They're getting mm-hmm. in they're getting inceived. They're getting uh <laughs> what lie to me. Mm. Oh god. They're looking for micro gestures. They're getting horse whispered. <laughs> are you trying to horse whisper me? Are you seeing through my my uh are you trying to see context in my words? Subtext. These thoughts are my own, and they usually have to do with apples and sugar, because I'm a pony. <laughs> I'm a pony. Um, that's why it's so easy to be a horse whisperer. They're only talking about one of two things. Mm-hmm. Hey, get off. Or give me an apple. <laughs> I, I don't even know what to say. All I can hope is that this person that is... Feeling this way is just completely misreading someone like walking up like, hey, how's it going? Get out of my head. These are my emotions. Whoa. Hey, whoa. I just asked you if you wanted extra salami. (laughs) I didn't mean anything else. There's no subtext there. Is, Is the world we live quietly a psychic battlefield? People trying to get into your People trying to... People trying to scope my business, my mm-hmm. cranium business, that they don't need to know about, but they're trying to scope it out. And, like, I'm trying to throw up defensive barriers with my mm-hmm. own prowess. There are, you, there are, uh, Griffin, it's 2012. Yeah. Every minute, there are 60 hours of footage uploaded to YouTube. All we want is for that to be true. <laughs> All we want is yeah. to pray that someone wants to know what our dreams are. Please <laughs> someone someone be trying to get into my head because yeah. I'm just laying out the the welcome mat for you every day on my channel Glasses Girl for 2020. Mm. Um isn't this what live journal is for? Live journal Pinterest any number of social <laughs> networking sites. Uh <laughs> Yeah, I uh, my brain is constantly just outputting like a really foul-mouthed twelve-year-old girl who's just talking shit about her classmates. So, mm-hmm. is that your what your internal critic sounds like? That is, I call her. I, I call her a little shoddy, and she's. What? <laughs> when when Griffin makes it huge, his you gotta have when you get big, you gotta have a vanity cartoon, Wayne mm-hmm. Head. Uh, Hammer Man, you got uh-huh. uh, Wish Wish Kid. You can make it big and get a vanity cartoon. Griffin's vanity cartoon is gonna be Little Shoddy, featuring Wanda Sykes as the voice of Little Shoddy, and try, Griffin will write all the uh, the scripts himself, and it'll last mm-hmm. three three uh, three episodes. Three minutes. short lived. <laughs> it doesn't need to be long to be a good vanity cartoon. You just you, you, everybody gets one. And that'll be Griffin's. My internal critic is is Rupert Giles from Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Nice. And whenever I have, uh, no matter what entertainment or media I'm taking in, he's always disappointed in, him, in me. That's that's not a goof. I, I just, I feel guilty all the time that I'm not reading books. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes for me it's Wanda Sykes. Sometimes it's Maggie Smith. Sometimes it's, they're together. And they're just... Ah. I would watch that buddy comedy oh, all day long. Oh, man. They made it. It's called Taxi. <laughs> I don't have an internal critic. Okay, is that normal? You Excellent. have a lot of you have a lot of external ones. <laughs> <laughs> like a balance, right? Uh, everybody, get out of everybody's heads. We're just trying to live day to day. Get out of there. Hey, I have been with my official. Uh, uh, there it is. People, I just podcasted so hard that I got winded. <laughs> wrapping it up anytime now I mean my life uh, I've been official with my boyfriend for almost two months and things are great however there's one problem my best friend who is a girl his best friend his best friend who is a girl has who has been desperately in love with him for the past two and a half years although they go to school together and my college is three hours away I do not feel threatened by her oh. okay. my issue comes from her refusal to recognize and respect my role in his life when I go to visit him at school, she will drop by, refuse to leave, and throw little jabs and backhanded comments my way. I've told my boyfriend that these things make me uncomfortable, but he sees nothing wrong with it. Although he never reciprocates her affections, he won't tell her that her behavior is both intrusive and appropriate. 
perhaps I'm overreacting, but it's really getting on my nerves, and I'm not sure how much longer I can hold my tongue and play nice. What do I do, Olivia? Uh, Olivia, you need someone in your life who is going to give you the straight dope, and you're lucky because we are here for you. You need to pull bounce the ripcord and bounce. Yeah, because I'll tell you what. Here's my take on it. Your boyfriend is addicted to this girl's attention. Oh, yeah, he loves it. Because she's so nice to him and says all these nice things and is just so in love with him. For the last two and a half years, anybody that realizes that their best friend is like desperately in love with them for that amount of time and doesn't back away from the situation or put it into it is just loving the attention. Yeah. The extent to which you need to bounce is, is incalculable. Like, you need to trust us on this one. We can tell you why you need to bounce, but you have got to bounce. Yeah, you gotta go. I mean, this is so obvious. <laughs> I don't mean that you gotta go. This thing's done. I was I was rereading the email because if you've been dating for like, you know, twenty years, then maybe you should reconcile. But two months and this, no, no, you, no, no, no. This is my main issue with it that she like talked to her boyfriend and said like, "Hey, this isn't cool," and he was like, "Ah, it's fine. I think it's cool. Time to get out." Go, go, go. Men and women can be friends. Didn't you see Will and Grace? Ugh. That's a bad example. Uh, My best friend's wedding. Oh, uh, wait. Uh, you mean Dupree. Tom you got, you um, are You got a lady dupe, and you have to you have to get out of this You situation. have to. Olivia, you are in the story of, of their relationship. She is the Kate Hudson, and you are the... Baxter. You are yeah, about Baxter. to get Baxtered so hard. Yeah. You're Baxtered. You, you, you need to, yeah. It's brutal. You need to get out um, because you, uh, you, you, this is not going to end well. This is bad. This is really bad. And the fact that she's even around right now is is wholly unacceptable. I don't know how. Because one of two things is going to happen. Like, she's going to win him. Or you're going to find your tires slashed or something. Yeah, like, she's going to go full-blown swim fan. And, and and burn your apartment down. If you had told us before you got into this relationship that you were going to date someone that lives three hours away, we would have very sternly warded you off from it. We would have mm -hmm. said, no, that's a bad idea. Now, we honestly have to put our foots, feet down. Yeah. Our collective feet. And our foots. And our foots. <laughs> all, all our foots. All three foots on the ground say, you, the, you can't do this, Olivia. You're too no. good for him. Too good for the situation. It's not him, even. It's not... It's... It, I mean, it is him because he obviously needs to grow up and have some emotional maturity and, and make some boundaries with this girl. Yeah. What is she even doing around? If you see each other, if you live three hours away, it can't be rare. You know, it, it's got to be a rare thing that you guys get to spend time together. What is she even doing there? That's what I'm saying. And the fact that your boyfriend doesn't see any problem with that. And when you confront him about it, he's like, nah, it's fine. No. Like, that's such an issue for me. We cool. <laughs> we cool. I am. You're not. You're not cool. You know, nope. bounce. This is because if you put it in any other context, like I never get to see my boyfriend, but then when I do, all he does is sit there and read a book. All he does is sit there and play video games. Like if he can't divide himself from this girl long enough to just hang out with you when you actually get to visit, mm -hmm. like that's that's an issue. Um, absolutely. And you know what else is is an issue? Hmm. Money. <laughs> I mean, I guess. Like, I guess people need it. And people like, need it when you I don't guess. have enough of and it. And people want it. You can't Money's out. This message is for who, Travis? Well, this first message is for Ashley Metcalf. Uh, oh, and it's from <laughs> Mom, Buddy, Brandy, and Kristen. Uh, and they say, happy 28th birthday. Um, uh, they're going to have a listening party tonight, uh, which is awesome. So happy birthday. You're listening right now. Um, and yeah, so Ashley, uh, it's her birthday. She's the youngest of three girls. She has a dog named Butters, and she loves MBMBAM and unicorns. Two great tastes that taste great together. We are the unicorn of podcasts. So happy birthday to you, Ashley. She asked for a jingle, but we, we took this pretty firm position on only giving jingles to businesses and not people, because that's weird. So instead, because it's your birthday, I'll give you the title of a jingle, and it would have been Birthday Boo. But now that's Aww. a... But 
you have to make up the song yourself. That's just that's just a leaping off point. So once you start Ashley Metcalf Incorporated, mm-hmm. Griffin will do a jingle for you. <laughs> yes. Who else we got on the uh, on the old birthday calendar, Trav? Uh, we've also got Sarah of Melbourne, Australia, and that comes from Tom, also of Melbourne, Australia. Um, and Tom wishes Sarah a happy Valentine's Day and birthday and three year anniversary combo. So. He's getting three wishes for the price of one. It's a great deal. We should have charged him triple. but In fact, we now will we retroactively, now will retroactively charge, charge him charge triple. Him triple. Um, uh, and it, she, He says that she's secretly in love with me, which I'm not. I don't really want to do any internet cuckolding today. Thank you. <laughs> I will just, I will not today. just hang out and not yeah. do that. But thank you. <laughs> but no. <laughs> but I appreciate the offer. But no. <laughs> and we would be remiss. So happy birthday, Valentine's Day anniversary to Sarah of Melbourne. Uh, you know what makes a great gift for mm. uh, for anybody, any occasion? Eternal love. Eternal love. And barring that is the gift of time. And barring that is the gift of economy. And barring that is the gift of environmental awareness. And you can give all three to people with a brand new project called Stack. Stack is a revolutionary concept in the world of soap uh, stuff. <laughs> you know, like soap, soapery. It's yeah. a revolutionary so- soapery soapening. concept. Soapistry. Soapistry. Um, so basically what stack soap is, it's a bar of soap that wear, that has a divot on the top. And as you wear it down to you just get the, st- the what we've trademarked is called the stupid sliver. You mm-hmm. end up with a stupid sliver. And, and usually you throw that away or you slip on it and die. With stack soap, <laughs> sorry, it's no a mur- death. It's a murder sliver. You're washing and- it. You're washing your body with it. You're washing your butt, and your butt swallows the sliver of soap because it's so <laughs> tiny, and you so, get sick. So stack soap is built with a divot, and when you use a bar of stack soap, it wears down, so it fits exactly in that divot. So when the, you just have a murder sliver, you slap it into a new bar. You don't waste any soap, and you're you're back off to the races. And you and and when you get a, another sliver. You slap it into the next bar. I have had a bar. Uh, the founder Eric has sent me a a uh, a few bars, and I've been using it. I feel probably I feel like I've never been clean before, which is unsettling. But also, uh, you know, I'm glad to discover it now before I'm in can my forties. Dis- no. Can you describe the scent to me? Yes, the bars he sent me were prototypes and unscented. So this will be a so short. So it comment. smells like clean. So it smells clean. It's a very clean scent. But anyway, uh, he was looking for money to make get a copper die uh, to to make these bars. You needed nine grand. You guys are insane people, and you have fully funded his project. Uh, the 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 Kickstarter is fully funded. Um, and because you guys were tw- tweeting and talking about it, the story was picked up by like Boing Boing and uh, and Gizmodo and a few other sites. So um, you guys are as always the best. So. But Thank you for proving that we are an economical juggernaut. We are a huge powerhouse in the world of internet, internet soapistry. Um, now, Griffin, you've been working on a jingle uh, for Stack Soap. Can you give us an update on that? Yeah. I, you know, I'm all about – right now I'm just sort of oscillating between themes, mm-hmm. um, between genres, you know, between like – there's a lot of – Cleanness, I think, has a lot of implications in in the poetical sense. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, there was a few uh, words that weren't words in there, but please go on. So I'm trying to find, I'm trying to like find the sign. There's like a lot of ether. I'm not used to this much ether when I create. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And so, yeah. like my net, I have to refine my net so that the ether. So where's your net at right now? Like right now, I'm thinking like a southern, southern rock, southern rock, and like the. It's all about getting clean, you know, but like the cleanness is also a metaphor for love. Human okay, okay. human love between people. So what's that sound like? So like Put your soap in my soap. That's all I have so far. Is <laughs> okay, good, good start. Put your soap in my, my soap. soap. I like it. I like you know, it. I think you just repeat that for like. Put your soap in my soap, and we'll both get clean together. Stack soap. 
<laughs> I think we could work out a pretty tight harmony for that, too. Yeah, I think we're, think we're really close on that. So uh, stacksoap.com, again, is the address. Um, and uh, and now, right now we got a word from another Max Fun show that may or may not be trying to sell you soap. I'm Jesse Thorne. Bullseye is all about discovering the good stuff in culture that will do nothing less than change your life. You know, I'd never heard anything like it before. It'd be like seeing a new color, which I guess is music's like biggest asset, is that you can hear new sounds. I'll probably never see a new color. I'll probably never experience like a new crazy taste, but I'll hear new sounds constantly. Culture picks, comedy, and in-depth interviews. It's the good stuff and just the good stuff in popular culture every week on Bullseye. Subscribe in iTunes or find it online at MaximumFun.org. Uh, do you want to come back with a Yahoo? Yeah, I want to come back to the to the comedy with a Yahoo. Uh, this one was sent in by Kit Rekka, which is a pretty good name. Uh, it was asked by Avatar Tar Sauce. It's pretty good. Uh, <laughs> Who asked? Clever. Sure. Uh, I like it. How big is love? How do you condense love into measurable units? My girlfriend asked me how much I love her. I don't know how to tell her because I don't know the formula of love and I don't know a lot about how to measure love. The correct answer is this much and then put your hands an appropriate distance apart. Mm -hmm. It sounds like the lyrics to the worst coasters song ever. Mm. <laughs> like a like a really shitty doo-wop tune that that no like B side maybe to who wrote the book of love. How do you quantify the relative <laughs> size? Who made the ruler of love? <laughs> I have found Who made the graduated cylinder of love? <laughs> the closest approximate um, metric, from what I've found, is Scoville units. Okay. Okay. Um, now, I, is that a word you've heard, or do you actually know what that concept represents? A Scoville unit is the measurement of heat in peppers. Okay. So, right. Uh -huh. Do you know what I mean? Like it's measure a, the capsaicin. My, that, it may not work for everyone, but my love has like a, a sort of, I wouldn't say Latino fire, but I would. Say it. I did. Uh -huh. So it's you out there. Say now. it. Right. Um, so that's how I like to. That's how I like to think. And also Scoville units, like the measurements are really high. A, a, a habanero, I think, has like two million scoves. Uh, that's uh -huh. shorthand for Scoville units. So okay. that's sort of what I'm working with. Um, okay. For, for See, my particular brand of love. I would have said stone. Okay, I like that. Because nobody knows how much it really is, and it's so mysterious. Mm-hmm. I like that. I, the thing that works for me about the Scoville units is that there are some real relatable peppers that you can just directly connect that to. Like, girl, my love is like the ghost chili. Oh, it's, that's. Oof. Yeah. Oh, and then you can say, like, we've calmed down to a, like a green pepper. Right now, I feel like this is more like a green pepper or a cayenne. Mm -hmm. Oh, and that's how you know it's like, OK, well, we've we've calmed down to like. Friend Scoville units, mm -hmm. and then you'd be like, "Baby, we are banana peppers," and then you break. <gasps> you, that's how you break up. Ah, uh, we're like milk. Mm. We're zero scoves. We actually cool other people's love when they drink us. <laughs> Just to be in our presence kills <laughs> other people's love. Yeah, we are the opposite <laughs> of love. Whatever that is, I they they need to come up with an opposite of love. How about it, Wordsmiths? <laughs> the love that's <laughs> even with all your science you still haven't been able to come up with a word that's the opposite of love yeah it's 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 pretty despicable you know you think you you think about a uh, uh shakespeare shakespeare mm -hmm. created uh eyeball he created the word puking green-eyed monster skim milk obscene that's all luggage that's, that's all created by shakespeare couldn't come up with the opposite of love. Pinterest? Yeah. <laughs> he did not. He did. He was talking about um, someone, I think it was in Two Gentlemen of Verona, where he says, her practicing her sartorial craft, uh, she had a lot of Pinterest because she had, uh. she had a lot of interest in pins. The and then the other, the other gentleman of Verona responds, it's not that she loved her, he opposite of loved her. <laughs> he, 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 and did, then he, he didn't. He did ah. opposite, uh, then he vomits and blacks out for six hours. <laughs> it's his longest play. Mm -hmm. <laughs> As a result, most, in lots of, uh, in lots of uh, theaters, they cut that. They trim it down to three hours mm -hmm. of vomiting and blacking well, out. Well, you can usually just turn it into like a, like a dream ballet. 
that kind of <laughs> conveys the time. Or you do like a War of the Roses kind of thing. And you're like, hey, buckle in, audience. Yeah. Purists Here's, through the whole this thing. This is a three-hour song about <laughs> social networking platforms. That you're <laughs> I am Barbicane the Tumblr. <laughs> Lord Stephen of Live Journal. <laughs> I don't know what's happening. I would like to have been there on this day when this girlfriend asked this guy how much he loved her, and he responded, I don't know. I have to go to Yahoo Answers. A hundred? <laughs> I literally can't quantify it. How big is a house? <laughs> we have we have a an opportunity here not to equate it to another metric, but to come up with our own metric that we can think about how much money we can make off of that if we sold that shit to Hallmark and we just said like, you know, 50 billion throbs. Throbs. Throbs is so good. I'm mad that we had this whole, we were going to have this whole riff and Travis just nailed it right out of the gate. It's yeah. throbs. Obviously. Throbs. What's it's the, sexual, uh, we... but it's also heart related. Yep. Okay, so zero throbs is just utter indifference. And negative throbs, is that hatred or does hatred have its own now, what is hatred? What is hatred? I'm sorry, I forgot the goof. <laughs> <laughs> you dullard. I'm not even going to do your throb goof now because you ruined my goof. No, this is, no, just, no, this is such out. a, please don't take this out on the money making <laughs> opportunity a, that we I'm have in front of us. At once a season, I get a goof veto and I'm using it to <laughs> Veto his goof as a punishment for you unintentionally killing my goof. In the annals of goof, we have a, this is like a goof end of Reservoir Dogs. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, oh, Travis is cu cutting a goof ear off. <laughs> just dancing. Fuck. Say your dumb thing about throbs. I'm just trying to come up with for our listeners to use with their lovers. Uh -huh. I just want us to come up with some sort of metric. I, uh, we founded the term. Travis founded the term. Let's Thank come you. up with some, some numbers. So zero well, is indifference. That's uh, how I feel about, like, Kevin Costner. Like, fine. He can do his thing. What is... Okay, whatever. so then it's, like, friendship is maybe... Maybe a hundred? If, if you are going to do that, why have a scale, though? Like, what's in between those two? I mean, there's a lot of step acquaintance, business partner, and there's dentist. levels of friendship. You can be like, we, you know, we're like go to lunch friends, and that's like seventy five throbs. Um, so that say actually is nice because everybody's always saying love, yeah. and the word doesn't mean anything. Let's get some numbers attached to it. That's what I'm trying. Yeah. Thank. Welcome to the welcome to the the team building exercise. A thousand, I think, should be friends of Benny's. <laughs> you know like, what I mean. I think that pure. I think that pure, and beautiful love, clocks in at around ten thou. But ten thou is like that's the kind of love that only your grandparents have, because mm -hmm. they know what sacrifice is. Uh, like they, ki your your pap pap killed the Nazis, so he can love a lot harder than you. <laughs> the only way that you can reach ten thou is if you've been married to the same person for more than fifty years, and also one of you has been to war, and you know the loss. Yeah. See, I like this. I like not only putting a number to it, but putting restrictions to it. Mm -hmm. So when someone's like, I love you 9,000 throbs, and you're like, no, you don't, because you didn't grow up in the same town next door to each other. So, there, sorry. How do, we, how do we measure it, though? Is there a device? Like a meat thermometer we can just plug into our hearts and know? Mm -hmm. It's a meat thermometer. <laughs> <laughs> hey, stab yourself at this. Hey, I gotta know. I gotta right? test it. Right in the you heart. You know those things they work. put in turkeys that you know it's done because it pops out? Yeah. It's like that. Yeah. It's like when you do your tire pressure and it shoots out a certain amount and you're like, oh, it looks like you're at about uh, 5,000 throbs. Mm. You guys are getting along well. I wish that, um, I think I'm just going to stick to measuring my wife's love the way I always have, and that's asking her to see a movie with Jason Statham in it. <laughs> I, that, what about the day when she one day says no? That actually, that joke was actually donated to me by Ray Romano. So I, definitely, <laughs> I definitely want to thank him for all his. Every everybody like four thousand throbs Raymond. You know what I mean? <laughs> everybody throbs Raymond. <laughs> that impression was the Bill Clinton. Was that the brother? <laughs> that was the brother. Everybody loves Raymond. <laughs> 
Raymond's, Raymond's brother sounds like a Vogon. It's a nightmare. Hey, I have found that I become too emotionally invested in television book series. I tend to overload myself in the beginning, like when I discovered Doctor Who and it consumed my every waking moment, and then feel empty and sad when they're over or I'm caught up to the current season. I don't know what to fill this void with besides more television and book series. Do you guys have any suggestions? So that's from Immoderate in Indianapolis. I I wish I knew the answer to this. I feel like, like Travis the is the looks- Travis is the king of of just he'll he'll call you'll suggest a new show to him and he'll call you at like three in the morning like well I watched all the Pawn Stars yeah next? like literally I will consume them till to non existence like to the point where I use it all up and no one else can enjoy it it's not, like for me it's like I can't be I can't be um my my work ethic goes right out the window when I know that there's TV that I should be watching. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like I've watched four episodes of games, Game of Thrones, and all I want to do is watch the rest of them. Yeah. But I'm trying to savor the experience. But it's literally why we've been doing this podcast. All I can think about is that show. You know uh, what I found funny is uh, I love when something like that happens and you it gets put in perspective for you because like I had never seen that as weird. Like just sitting down and like, well, I've got today off. I'm gonna watch every episode of season three of Doctor Who, right? And then when I started living with Teresa, she would come home and be like, you were on the couch watching Doctor Who when I left. I was like, yeah, I've been doing it all day. And she was just horrified. Like, how do you do that? The good news and is... And then I, then I realized it was weird. The, the good news is that you've already found the answer to your question. You have to, you have to just move on to the next thing. Yeah. You just soak up, soak up the radiance of the next, the next thing. You got to be constantly on the hunt. That's why we got Twitter. Do you know, you know what dad does? Our dad does something that's always blown my mind, and I, I first noticed it when we go on vacation. Hi, dad. He will simultaneously read, like, five books. Like, and that blows my mind. That idea of, like, not just one book that you're glued to. Like, he'll read a chapter of one, set it down, and pick up another one, and read a chapter of that one, and set that down, and pick up a different... It's, it's, it's amazing. He has an apparatus that he built that allows him to read and turn the pages of five books at once that he reads with compound eyes. Our dad has I have, compound eyes. I have a hard enough time finding one books that Brain Giles won't disapprove of, let alone <laughs> five that I can read concurrently. So maybe that's it. Maybe pick like different shows and try to like cut Doctor Who with Storage Wars. Cut it, you know, and break it up a little bit. Getting married helps us too, because yeah. when uh, I conned my wife into watching Battlestar, she ended up really liking it. But at first, when you're like, and then. And then this, and then it's on space, and then it's old timey. And as the captain, it's Edward James almost. <laughs> it's kind of a hard pitch, so we had to watch uh, Dawson's Creek uh, alongside of it, which mm-hmm. is which is good because it took us longer to get through both of them. Uh, and now Dawson's Creek, of course, went on a lot longer, so we're burning through those. Um, you got you got got though. I got goofed. Yeah, it was a, it was a dirty trick, but I fell for it because I do. Because <laughs> that's my job. I, and I think that's another thing watching something with someone so you have to like also match their schedule because like uh, Teresa and I have been watching Downton Abbey that's how you do it yeah yeah and because like we have two different schedules it's like hey let's find a special time to watch an episode together instead of like well she's off to work I'm gonna burn through the day watching you know every episode you, or something. you really really can't enjoy a show like that you really if you watch if you spend an entire day watching the show it's not as special anymore but now no. whenever new episodes of Downton Abbey come out like I watch them with my girlfriend and it's like an event it's like an exciting thing that right. I get it's so big excited deal. for and when I said Downton Abbey I meant The Bachelor <laughs> um, <laughs> I wish we could talk about The Bachelor together because we can't. I want to. I, I need to. I need to air out some grievances I have with Courtney. Ugh. Okay. Well, I'll just take a headset off and. Hey, how? you can talk about it if I can pretend like you're talking about Flavor of Love. Okay. <laughs> can you switch the names around? Just replace all the girls with New York. Uh, how many push-ups should I be able to do? I'm 30 and a guy. Thanks, brothers. There's only one way to solve this, right? All three of us do yeah. push-ups right now to see how many. Yeah, we gotta do push-ups right now. And see, see how we do. I can't, I I got, just got a text. Only if we can edit it out later, because I feel like it's only good if we can come back and say like eight hundred. Okay. All right. Here we go. Ah. Eight hundred. Eight hundred. I did eight hundred too. I really? did 
did 14. <laughs> wow, that is not good. You should, you really did them, huh? Uh, but I had it. I but my roommate sat on my back while I did it. <laughs> the thing is, it doesn't matter how many that you do. It's how it's the next time you gotta do one more. Yeah. Big, big, <laughs> big, big dog. No fear. <laughs> Nineteen ninety-eight. Dig deep. Dig deep. No fear. <laughs> <laughs> Never give up. Never surrender. Uh, you can fight. You can fly. You can crow. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta save Maggie. Gotta say, Jack, let your roommate sit on your back. <laughs> oh my god. Bangarang. No fear. No you just limit. gotta get out there and bangarang. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> no fear. I have all this. I'm reading this off of my card's rear windshield right now. <laughs> Actually, I have all of it. I have all of this emblazoned there. I can't. I've been in several collisions. <laughs> Travis, you could probably do. Were we to actually do push-ups, you could probably do more than us. That seems that fair. Is, that is probably true. You I, use, I have you healthy your, upper body strength. Uh, your physical I, form in the world in a way that Griffin and I are, I are take unaccustomed. A great offense to that because I have recently been crushing it with Mr. Bob Harper of The Biggest mm. Loser, yeah. uh, and he has been toning and blasting me uh, in in ways that I did not know were possible for my body to be toned and blasted. Is your t- is the titular it that you're crushing your dignity? Is that how <laughs> I that's actually out? I no kidding. I put the DVD, the workout DVD, in my computer in my room so that no one can. Because when I work out, I look like a fucking sea creature. I look awful. I am like within three minutes before the fucking warm up is over. I am just drenched in sweat. I can't. I don't own free weights with which to do the exercises, so I have to use cans of pineapples. <laughs> is that why you keep telling me you're eating so much pineapple? One time I tried to do it with yearbooks, but they got too slippery from the sweat I put on them. Ugh. I think the rule of thumb, the problem is however many you say you can do, if a person cares enough about it to ask you how many you can do, they're going to say they can do five more than whatever you just said. Guys, I live in fear of the night that I'm at a party and all the dudes are like, let's have a push-up competition. <laughs> I have defined my entire social life around congregating with people who are not going to put me in that awful, awful position. Yeah, I, you, you, uh, and, and you ask, you know, obviously where are the pineapples? If we're going to do this. <laughs> yeah, if we're going to do, do, it, do right. it right, where's the cans of dole? I'm going to need a pineapple can and I'm also going to need the skinniest person here to sit on my back. <laughs> I... I was uh, I've been trying to get a little more active, and mm. yesterday I was actually riding the exercise bike while I was watching an episode of Parks and Recreation, and I thought, if I'm not careful, I'm going to lose touch with the streets. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this that's my concern is I might not have the urban, the sort of urban edge that I once <laughs> possessed. I oh, I, I should mention I was also drinking a glass of Pinot Gris. <laughs> and wearing a vest. I was wearing a vest <laughs> and nothing else. And a monocle. And a monocle. And reading uh, monocle. Griffin, you got a Yahoo? I have a few Yahoos. Uh, this one was sent in by Golly Ayali. Thank you, Golly. Uh, it's by Yahoo Answers user, I'm not even going to try, K-X-F-L-E-U-G-H, which I think is pronounced Kla. Uh-huh. Who asks? How do I keep my How do I keep my bat less sharp? <laughs> <laughs> how do I come out of the closet as a Jeopardy fetishist? Oh no! I mean, there is nothing it's... sexier to me than a good-looking female Jeopardy contestant. Wow! What? Maybe that's because of the rarity. <laughs> this is the only thing I can ever think about again that this exists. <laughs> This Somewhere, is, there is someone going, what is my boner? You can Ugh. do as much for the world as you want to to improve it, and this will still be a thing in it. It doesn't matter. We're, it, it's sunk. The ship is sunk. You know, we've had questions about, like, you know, uh, wanting to bone Pokemon and, mm-hmm. like, porn parties with your friends. This is the most upsetting Sexual thing I've ever heard. Cause they're, uh, cause you record the episode and you have no idea. Yeah. You're just trying to remember, you know, what what famous actress, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, and there's some dude at home like, yeah, answer. 
Yeah, That's ring good. that buzzer. God, oh, you see how she signed her name? Bet oh, it yeah. all. Let's deal with some pretty harsh truths right now. If you think that Ken Jennings didn't get more <laughs> trim than a Persian rug factory, then you are <laughs> fooling yourself. You are no. telling yourself goofs and lies. Yeah, but Griffin, here's the thing. There's w- him rolling up to a bar and all the Jeopardy groupies like falling all over him. That's perfectly fine. That doesn't bother me at all. But the idea of someone sitting at home in the dark, in the glow of their TV screen, just like losing it, not because the person is winning and they want to like latch on to their coattails, but like just because the person is on the show. That's weird. Situation. Uh, There's an attractive lady playing Jeopardy against two people, crushing them, crushing them. By the time the final Jeopardy comes, there's no way they can catch up. But she still bets everything, gets the answer right, and writes a little joke down in the answer field. Yeah. How do you not? Yeah, I'm, I'm beating it. All right. Dots the, the eye with a little heart. Yeah. And the little heart has a mustache for, for well, I guess Trebek doesn't have that anymore. No. <laughs> And the little heart doesn't have a mustache. And she and sh- as she's leaving, she books her flight home. And they say, "Wait, you've got to come back tomorrow and and win again." She said, "I just won Jeopardy." Yeah. And then she <sighs> winks and leaves. Batting a thousand, and then she gets. And then they say, "Did anyone catch her name?" No, she was a Jeopardy angel. She was Roma. <laughs> she was Roma Downey. She's gone now. <laughs> Schooled by an angel. <laughs> and that was the day I shaved my mustache. Alex Trebek. <laughs> I'm saying there's and, there's a lot of, I'll say, un un, sort of conspicuous sexual energy in Jeopardy. It's it's yeah. I think it's under the radar, and it's all generated by Alex Trebek. Well, I mean, and also in every episode, someone s- talks about Merv Griffith. If there's ever been a dirtier name, I don't know what is. Mm. Merv Griffith. I do love when that show gets accidentally sexual, like the, when the guy got the question about the garden instrument that also means a person of loose morals, and he said, ho, and the answer was rake. Or they talk about, <laughs> there was one where uh, the guy got asked what a, a, a punch to the back of the head was called, named after an animal, and he said donkey punch, but it's really a rabbit punch. <laughs> Yikes. Uh, that's brutal. So that's you've, really- you've been working, at, what are you, writing a middle floss article about this, or what? <laughs> You're pretty well educated. Well, listen, thank you guys so much for joining us. We certainly appreciate uh, you spending this time with us. Uh, my brother, my brother, me is the, is the show, if you've uh, forgotten. Thank you so much to everybody who tweets about the show throughout the week using the NBMA hashtag. Uh, our friend, also named Rico, was, was crushing it this week with, I think, 30 or 40 tweets. Um, uh, Kalia Buckler. I think this person's name is Donger Monkey. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hallways, Gowdy James is always Church's wife. All the all the classic, the classic uh, uh, hits. Nikki the Rat, Chapman, Kara. Um, just use that NBA game hashtag. Joshua Moore, uh, Autosun, Hooligan D eighty nine, Sport Burke. So many. Um, and thank you to everybody who who uh, has shared the show with a friend, told someone to listen. You can of course find us on iTunes. Search for, you know, our show. And wh- while you're searching iTunes, might I recommend checking out the Satellite Dish with Justin and Sydney McRoy? It's it's just so good. Their take on on modern day television, hilarious. And uh, in case of emergency, is on there too. It's Travis show where he talks about how you can survive disaster scenarios. It's practical, useful advice, you which is pretty pretty different from our sh- our show. You can download my EP, <laughs> my iTunes. <laughs> Modern modern love is that the name of it? What did you decide on? It's called Helplessness Blues because I I am Fleet Foxes. You guys probably <laughs> don't know that about me. <laughs> I did not know. Congratulations, you got you guys are having a great year. Um, I want to thank John Roderick and the Long Winters for the use of their theme song. It's a departure off the album Putting the Days to Bed. Uh, Justin, you recently got uh, uh you you got you recently had a, a Long Winters experience, right? Yeah, my man John Roderick took a picture of him and Chris Ballou from President of the United States of America because he knew it would make me happy. Waiting for he that sent mashup. That sent mashup it to me. Project, yeah. Super Collider. Um, so, yeah, get that album. You're going you're gonna, to you're gonna love it. Your kids are going to love it. <laughs> and it sounds like Travis is starting to open a candy of some sort, so we should probably <laughs> wrap up. It's my, it's my Valentine's Day candy. I'm really excited about it. I got it 50% off. Griffin. All right. 
Uh, this is so cheap because I waited till after the hunt. This final day. Yahoo was sent in by. <laughs> you advise people! Griff, let's go. <laughs> It was sent in by Kit Recca. Thank you, Kit. It's by Yahoo Answers user George Costanza. Who asked, <laughs> sure. My two hamsters escaped my hamster city and settled in my wall and won't listen to reason? <laughs> <laughs> I'm Justin McElroy. I'm Travis McElroy. I'm Griffin McElroy. This has been My Brother, My Brother, Me Kiss Your Dad. Square on the lips. Keep your heart, three stacks. Keep your heart. Hey, keep your heart, three stacks. Keep your heart. Man, these girls are smart. Three stacks, these girls are smart. Play your part. <laughs> <laughs>